the experts who participated in, in our exercise, in our expert elicitation exercise, um, identified a range of different climate risks and impacts. And we boiled these down to three principal categories, food security or insecurity, migration and displacement of people. And then thirdly, uh, storm damage uh, to infrastructure, mainly to ports. Um, and a bunch of different cascading impacts are likely to stem or flow out of those main three categories. The pro particular problem with impacts of food insecurity and migration is that they don't tend to be confined to the place where they first occur. They tend to cascade across borders and create impacts that are sometimes not even imaginable when we first talk about the climate hazard that initiated them. A historical example is from the 07-08 food crisis in which drought in Australia initiated a food crisis which cascaded across the world and created issues of unrest in the Middle East and um, contributing to the Arab Spring and creating hunger across the world. Perhaps the most vulnerable region is the Sahel, East and West Africa. Um, and that's mainly within the agricultural sector. So, for instance, uh, at the moment across Africa, uh, only around about 5% of the agricultural uh, land area uh, is irrigated. Um, and that compares to around about 21% globally at the moment. So, obviously, if your region uh, in the Sahel uh, is going to be hit by more heat waves and by more droughts, leading to agricultural yields re reducing. One of the big mitigation or adaptation measures, uh, should I say, uh, that can be implemented is to ensure that those uh, croplands are irrigated because irrigated croplands are going to be more resilient to droughts and a lack of water. We talked to experts about how resilience to climate impacts should be strengthened. It's important that we understand what socio-economic socio vulnerabilities exist and how these might exacerbate climate hazards in the future, creating bigger impacts than actually need to happen. So we know that climate hazards are accelerating and that we're going to face more and more climate risks over the coming decade. But because we have no way of systematically tracking what those risks are, we're not going to be prepared for them. And when they come and we're surprised by them, they're going to create worse impacts than they would had we been prepared. So one of the things that a lot of the experts in the research have been calling for is for a central database or a central um, body to draw together the different risks that we face and have a comprehensive understanding of what those risks are. Only by having that sort of central comprehensive understanding can the global community be properly prepared for the challenges that we are certainly going to face over the next decade. And I think the big wealthy countries who often also tend to be the big emitters need to work with those local communities uh, in order to identify the types, the exact measures uh, that are then implemented on the ground. Some excellent work uh, by the UNFCCC and 21 African nations where adaptation measures locally specific, identified by local people on the ground, uh, were identified and compiled in, into this long list of agri agricultural adaptation measures that could be, could be implemented. It's those sorts of measures that that climate finance supplied by wealthier nations really need to focus on to reduce those vulnerabilities and prevent the hazards such as drought and heat waves translating into severe impacts within those vulnerable countries within the next 10 years. And by doing so and addressing those vulnerabilities, we also prevent or minimise the likelihood of cascading impacts occurring uh, and stemming out from those vulnerable regions. But one of the biggest problems that we face is that finance um, to address socioeconomic vulnerabilities is not forthcoming. So for example, the $100 billion which has been promised to less developed countries for climate change mitigation and adaptation action still is not forthcoming. And this is the, in the interest of more developed countries and richer countries because the climate impacts are not going to be isolated to the areas where they occur. They are going to cascade across borders. They are going to create 
bigger problems that are not anticipated because of our lack of understanding of the risks that we're facing. So really, it's a case of paying now or paying much more later. We can strengthen these communities so that they are better able to um, adapt to climate change, which is already in track. Um, or we can allow them to remain vulnerable and we can watch these consequences unfold as they certainly will.